Hello viewers, in this video I will try to talk about through the looking glass and what Alice found there. So uh, this is a children's novel published on 27 December 1871 and written by Lewis Carroll and it is also the sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland that was published in 1865. So in this novel uh, Alice again enters a fantastical world this time by climbing through a mirror into the world that she can see beyond it and there she finds that just like a reflection everything is reversed including logic for example running helps one remain stationary walking away from something brings one towards it chase men are alive nursery rhymes characters exit and so on okay and uh, before moving on to the summary let's try to know about the author Author is, I have already told you, Charles Ludwig Dachshund, uh, that was his full name, and he is known uh, with his pen name, Lewis Carroll, pen name, and he was uh, an English author, poet, and mathematician. His most notable works are Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, that was published in 1865, and its sequel, Through the Looking Glass, that was published in 1871. He was forced for his facility with wordplay, logic, and fantasy. His poems uh, Jabberwocky that was published in 1871 and The Hunting of the Snark that was published in 1876. They are classified in the genre of literary nonsense. Okay. So uh, without any delay now, let's dive into uh, the summary. So this will be just a brief summary. Please read the whole text line by line. Then only things will be clear for you. So the chapter one uh, is titled as Looking Glass House. So in chapter one, we uh, get to know that uh, Alice is playing with a white kitten whom she calls Snowdrop and black kitten whom she calls Kitty. And when she ponders what the world is like on the other side of a mirror's re reflection, uh, then she was climbing up onto the fireplace mantel. Then she pokes at the wall hung mirror behind the fireplace and discovers to her surprise that she is able to step through it to an alternative world. And in this reflected version of her, uh, of her own house, she finds a book with looking glass poetry called Jabberwocky, whose re reverse printing she can read only by holding it up to the mirror. The, then she also observes that the ch chess pieces have become to life, though they remain small enough for her to pick up. Then uh, we got. Then we get chapter two. The title of the Chapter 2 is The Garden of Live Flowers. So upon leaving the house where it had been a cold snowy night, Alice enters uh, a sunny spring garden where the flowers can speak. They perceive Alice as being a flower that can move about. Elsewhere in the garden, Alice meets the Red Queen, who is now human size and who impresses Alice with her ability to run at breathtaking speeds. Then we get Chapter 3. So Chapter 3 is called Looking Glass Insects. So that, uh, now, the Red Queen, which we get in our uh, previous uh, chapters, so the Red Queen now reveals to Alice that the uh, entire countryside is laid out in squares. Uh, it is just like a gigantic chessboard. And uh, it offers to make Alice a queen if she can move all the way to the 8th rank row in a chess, in a chess match. Uh, then Alice is placed in the second rank as one of the White Queen's pawns and begins her journey across the chessboard by boarding a train that jumps over the third row and directly into the fourth rank, thus acting on the rule that pawns can advance two spaces on their first move. Then she arrives in a forest where a depressed uh, net teaches her about the looking glass insects. Strange creatures also part bug part object that is uh, for example bread and butterfly rocking horse fly before flying away sadly moreover alice continues her journey and along the way she, cro she crosses the wood where things have no names then there she forgets all nouns including her own name then with the help of fawn who has always forgotten his identity she makes it to the other side where they both remember everything realizing that he is a fawn she is a human and that fawns are afraid of humans and it runs off to alice frustration so then we get uh, chapter four so in chapter four is called um, twiddle dumb and twiddle d so in the chap chapter four alice there meets the fat with twin brothers called twiddle dumb and twiddle d whom she knows from the nursery rhymes 
After reciting the long poem, the walrus and the carpenter, they draw Alice's attention to the Red King, loudly snoring away under a nearby under a nearby tree and maliciously provoke her with idle philosophical banter that she exists only as an imaginary figure in the Red King's dreams. Eventually, the brothers begin uh, suiting up for a battle, uh, only to be frightened away by an enormous crow as the nursery rhyme about them predicts. So that was about chapter 5. So now we have got chapter, sorry, chapter 4. Now we have got chap chapter 5. Chapter 5 is titled as Wool and Water. So now Alice next uh, meets the White Queen who is very absent-minded but boasts of and demonstrates her ability to remember future events before they have happened. Now Alice and the White Queen, they advance into the chessboard's fifth rank by crossing over a brook together. But at the very moment of the crossing, the Queen transforms into a talking ship in a small shop. Then Alice soon finds herself struggling to handle the oars of, of a small robot, where the ship annoys her with seemingly nonsensical shouting about crabs and feeders. So that, that's it about chapter 5. Now we have got chapter 6. Chapter 6 is titled as Humpty Dumpty. Now after crossing yet another brook into the sick ring, Alice immediately encounters Humpty Dumpty, who besides celebrating his unbirthday, provides his own translation of the strangers of the strange terms in Jabberwocky. In the process, he had in introduced Alice to the concept of portmanteau words before his inevitable fail. Next is chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7 is titled as The Lion and the Unicorn. So all the king's, uh, all the king's, king's horses and all the king's men, they come to Humpty Dumpty's assistance and are accompanied by the white king along with the lion and the unicorn who again proceed to act out a nursery rhyme by fighting with each other. And in this chapter, the March Hare and Hatter of the first book, they make a brief reappearance in the guise of Anglo-Saxon messengers called Haigha and Hatta. So that was chapter 7. And now we get to, uh, let's try to know about chapter 8. Chapter 8 is titled as It's My Own Invention. So in chapter 8, we will get to know how upon leaving to Upon leaving the lion and unicorn to their fight, Alice reaches the seventh rank by crossing another brook into the four-step territory of the Red Knight, who is intent on capturing the white pawn. Then Alice, until the white knight comes to her rescue, uh, escorting her through the forest towards the final brook crossing, the knight recites a long poem of his own composition called Haddock's Eyes and repeatedly falls off his horse. Chapter 9. Chapter 9 is titled as Queen Alice. Now bidding farewell to the white knight, Alice steps across the last brook and is automatically crowned a queen with the crown uh, materializing abruptly on her head, which is a reference to pawn promotion. Then she soon finds herself, finds herself in the company of both the white and red queens who relentlessly confound Alice by using wordplay to thwart her attempts at logical discussion. Then they invite one another to a party and that will be hosted by the newly crowned Alice, of which Alice herself had no prior knowledge. So now we get chapter 10. So in chapter 10, uh, 10 is named, uh, named as Seeking. Now Alice arrives and seats herself at her own party, which quickly turns into chaos. So finally Alice grabs the Red Queen, believing her to be responsible for all the day's nonsense and begins shaking her. So in chapter 11, uh, chapter 11 is titled as Waking. Now Alice awakes in her armchair to find he herself holding the black kitten who she deduces to have been the red queen all along and with the white kitten having been the white queen. Okay. And chapter 12, uh, chapter 12 is titled as Witch Dreamed It. The story uh, with Alice recalling the speculation of the Twid Twiddledee brothers that everything may have been a dream of the Red King and that Alice might herself be no more than a figment of his imagination. So the book ends with the line, life what is, what is it but a dream. So in that way it ends. Uh, I have just tried to uh, read you and try to give you information uh, and summary of this um, children fiction. So I hope uh, it will uh, help you in a very narrow way. So please read the original text, then uh, you don't have to worry. Otherwise, you will have a problem if you do not read the whole text because you will miss many things.